Ever wondered how the ancients opened their cities? No, not with a giant key, but with gates, and not just any gates. Picture this, Telerani Israel in the early Bronze Age. Here, archaeologists have discovered the earliest known gate, offering us a glimpse into the past. Now these weren't your ordinary gates. They were the beating heart of ancient cities, serving as both protection and bustling trade centers. Imagine the clamor of merchants haggling, the clatter of pottery, the smell of spices wafting through the air, all happening right at the city gates. These discoveries are like puzzle pieces, helping us piece together the grand tapestry of history. They show us how our ancestors lived, how they built their societies, and how they interacted with the world around them. So the next time you open a door, remember, you're partaking in a tradition older than your great-great-great-grandma's homemade cookie recipe. Imagine being at the grocery store and instead of a credit card, you pull out a chunk of silver. Well, that was the reality for the folks in the Middle Bronze Age Levant. Yes, you heard that right. Instead of swiping or tapping to pay, people back then had to weigh their silver. This might seem a bit cumbersome to us, but it was a significant step forward in the economic systems of the time. In the world of archaeology, silver linings are not just a metaphor. They're literal, tangible pieces of history that can tell us so much about our past. The discovery of evidence of silver currency in the Levant during the Middle Bronze Age is one such silver lining. This discovery is more than just a shiny piece of metal. It's a window into the past, a peek into the economic practices of ancient civilizations. It provides us with insight into how trade interactions were carried out, what commodities were considered valuable, and how transactions were conducted. Imagine the scene. A bustling marketplace filled with stalls selling everything from food to fabrics, pottery to precious stones. Our Bronze Age shopper haggles over the price of a beautiful piece of pottery. Once the price is agreed upon, out comes the silver. It's weighed, the transaction is completed, and our shopper goes on their way, pottery in hand. But it's not just about the economics. The use of silver as currency also tells us about the social hierarchy of the time. It was a symbol of wealth and status, a marker of a person's place in society. The more silver you had, the higher your status. This discovery is a testament to the ingenuity of our ancestors, their ability to innovate and adapt. They created a system of trade and currency that laid the foundations for the economic systems we know today. So, the next time you're upset about forgetting your wallet, just be glad you don't have to lug around a bag of silver. We all know we can't time travel, but what if I told you that our DNA can? Now let's take a journey back in time to ancient Israel, where archaeologists have made a groundbreaking discovery. They've retrieved ancient Israelite DNA from a burial site at Kirjath Jerim. This isn't just any old DNA, this is a veritable time capsule, carrying secrets from thousands of years ago right into the present day. So what does this mean? Well, this priceless genetic material gives us an intimate look into the lives of the ancient Israelites. It's like a biological history book, written in the language of life itself. It tells us about their health, their diet, and even the diseases they battled. But it gets even more exciting. This DNA also reveals their genetic heritage. It's almost like a family tree that dates back centuries. We can see how the ancient Israelites are related to other peoples of the region, and even track migrations and intermarriages over time. This is a monumental step forward in our understanding of the past. It's not just history, it's personal. It's about real people who lived, loved, and left their mark on the world. And now, thanks to this DNA time capsule, their story lives on. In essence, this discovery is a testament to the power of science and archaeology. It shows us that even though we can't travel back in time, we can still uncover the secrets of the past, one gene at a time. It's a reminder that every strand of DNA is a thread in the tapestry of human history. Who needs a time machine when we've got DNA, am I right? You've heard of swords in the stone, but what about swords in a cave? Imagine this. You're exploring a cave that overlooks the majestic Dead Sea, and suddenly, you come across something extraordinary. No, it's not a hidden treasure chest filled with gold, but something arguably far more thrilling, Roman swords and a spearhead. These aren't just any old weapons. They're relics from an era long past, a testament to the Roman presence in this region during ancient times. The Romans, known for their military prowess and intricate weaponry, once held sway over vast territories, and the area around the Dead Sea was no exception. These swords and the solitary spearhead aren't just chunks of rusted metal. They're more like time machines, whisking us back to the age of the Roman Empire. They paint a vivid picture of Roman soldiers standing tall and formidable, 
their hands gripping these very weapons as they patrolled the craggy cliffs and deep valleys of this historic region. These relics help us understand the extent of Rome's influence, miles away from the city itself. They give us a glimpse into a time when Roman legions marched through these lands, their banners fluttering in the wind, their swords glinting in the harsh desert sun. Discoveries like these aren't just exciting for historians and archaeologists. They're a thrilling reminder for all of us that our world is layered with history, waiting to be unearthed. Each artifact is a tangible thread, connecting us with the people and cultures who walk this earth before us. It's fascinating to think that these Roman relics spent centuries hidden away in a cave, silently guarding their secrets until the day they were finally discovered. These swords and the spearhead are more than just weapons. They're symbols of a bygone era, silent witnesses to the ebb and flow of empires, and keys to unlocking the mysteries of our past. So, next time you're spelunking, keep your eyes peeled. You never know when you might stumble upon a piece of history. What if I told you that a couple of rocks could change everything we know about a kingdom? Yes, you heard that right. Stones can speak volumes, and they've been doing quite a bit of talking about the 10th century BCE kingdom of David and Solomon. Now, this isn't just any kingdom we're talking about. This one's got a starring role in one of the greatest books of all time, the Bible. David and Solomon, two of the most iconic figures in biblical history, had their reign during this period. The tales of their rule, their wisdom and their follies have been passed down generations. But how much of it is fact and how much is, well, story? That's where our trusty rocks come in. Recent archaeological discoveries at regional sites are suggesting a different narrative. They hint at an emerging kingdom during the 10th century BCE, right when David and Solomon were said to be in power. These findings challenge our previous understanding of the biblical narrative. It's like finding out that your favorite superhero had a day job as a barista. It doesn't make them any less super, but it adds a whole new layer to their story. These stones are not just mere rocks. They are silent witnesses to a past that's still being uncovered. They've withstood the test of time, bearing the marks of a civilization that existed thousands of years ago. They give us a glimpse into an era that we've only read about in ancient texts. And the best part? They're still talking, still revealing secrets about the world of David and Solomon. So next time you see a stone, remember, it might just be a piece of history waiting to be discovered. It might be holding tales of kings and kingdoms, of battles won and lost, of a time when the world was a very different place. So remember folks, even rocks have stories to tell. Until next time, keep digging into history.